me, I'm telling you that you have what it takes to be successful here in Africa. Those who control the media are the people that's controlling the mind of the people. Yeah, that, because that's the gateway. <laughs> to the yeah. then, guys, you know something? We're going to be sharing something very special here. This one is a special. Let me tell you something. Don't tell anyone. You get me? Don't go and tell anybody. If you get it here, keep it inside your pocket, your mind. But you are not stingy. I know you are going to tell a lot of people. Let's rock it. So today we're going to be a special one from KOD. Sure. Who is Kwame KOD? So Kwame Bindako is an entrepreneur, engineer, and author. Before meeting this guy, you know, I was in the ambitious. When I get out, travel. Yeah, you know that kind of something. But after meeting him, everything changed. I, I started seeing opportunity in Ghana. I started putting, believing in myself. Mm. I started reading a little, a little bit about history. And now I can say that I'm very confident that I can be very, like, I'm, I'm still on it simple. I can be very successful without moving an inch on the continent. And the, all right, what's up, lovely people? Village boy here, 24 7 and Chafa. And today, as usual, we are back on your screen again to share the little that we know. It's going to be, you know, insightful, very educative and informative. So stick and stay, don't go anywhere. I, you know, I have my resource person with me here, Eric Riafi. We'll be seeing him, so there's no need for any introduction all right <laughs> and today we will we'll be talking about african advantage african advantage what an amazing topic to talk about on this sure. platform sure. eric you're welcome thank you bro i trust you're well sure sure i'm well i'm well, I'm well. Okay, beautiful uh, today we're going to be talking about african advantage sure sure what is african advantage first of all tell us maybe maybe this is not your name <laughs> okay so as you said i'm Kamna yafi okay yeah so you can also call me eric anyway mm. sure so um you ask of african advantage yeah okay so we are in a world where we we have been told that there's nothing in africa mm. just look go into our schools even when the lecturers are teaching us they always set, set examples uh, you know when you go to us when you go to europe you know all these countries mm. they, they they try to tell you that there's nothing here and let's also go back to the school have you seen any um when you are reading you see newton uh pakistan law Pythagoras. Mm, have you is. have you seen any maybe kofi menu an engineer who did something in it no so this shows that they, they we have been deliberately brainwashed that africa is nothing and the, the advantage that we have we, even those who are teaching us, they have no idea how, they, how no it takes. Idea. So maybe after the, the end of this video, get to know some of the advantage that we have as an African. As an African. What an insightful one, Charlie. This is just the beginning, but I trust that it's going to be insightful, more informative. Exactly. Okay, so what are some of the... You have the whole, uh, you know, knowledge about this African advantage, you know. Take us through, take us through what should we know, the advantages we have as an African, specifically as a Ghanaian. Okay. So that that kind of, you know, travel outside, travel abroad before you can make it. We can actually look around, you know, our environment and figure out some kind of opportunities for ourselves and uh, do better in our country here rather than traveling. Okay, sure. So, first of all, I'll talk about the African continent as a whole. Okay. Because we are talking about an, an African advantage. Yes. One, one advantage that we have as an African mm. is agriculture. Most of us, immediately when you go to school, they take this knowledge out of you. Mm. The, and it's very crucial, agriculture, because when you go, let me tell you, most of us, you know, some of, most of us, we don't know what it, what's happening in UK, in all these European countries. Yeah. But we have been brainwashed by the media that when you go there, everything is good, everything is awesome. But a few part of even us some states you can't go crop there mm. africa here everywhere you go if you put maize there it will grow, it will grow. so this advantage has been taken out from us and when you go you know when your ma your father or your grandfather is having a cocoa when you go to shs you go to university you say that me me i don't me, like i can't <laughs> go back to the farm like i can't even hold the handle of a cutlass that so, kind of thing. So let me let me do some calculation. Mm. Let me tell you, if you have ten acres of cocoa, it cannot be compared to a monthly salary. Mm. Ten acres of cocoa. Imagine you you open maybe you you have that business. So let me tell you something about business. Mm. So if I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, that means I start with a self develop uh, self employed. So mm -hmm. I start doing it myself. Okay. Let me tell you the difference between self employed and the business. Now. 
we get to a point I realize that before I can get a lot of money, me doing it alone won't help. So, you so need then, a, a, then you know, external forces exactly. Like, hands. So I then I have to build systems. That that place have to be very good with people. I have to be very good in uh, management. Mm. Then I'll train the people to also take over. You get to a time, then the thing is booming without my presence. Okay. So the thing is, what I'm trying to say is that agriculture is one of them. And mm. one thing that we have to, we the elites or the one that we are saying we are educated, we have mm. to do is that we have to do it with business mindset. So if I'm going to an Af uh, agriculture, I'm buying maybe five, uh, ten acres land for maybe plantation. I'm going to buy another ten acres land for maybe cassava plantation. Mm. Then that one, I'll, I'll do it in a business mindset. So I'm not doing it just because I want to feed my family with it. That's what our fathers were doing. They were just doing farming just to feed our family. Mm. That's why we didn't get much. They weren't yes, doing yeah. it as a business. So one is agriculture so if you are here if an african your mom is having a lot of cocoa like all these oh, natural resources not. don't let the school the school has already taken it me until i started reading the books like this right yeah, we will talk, about, we'll talk about it then i realized that ah then i've been doing like this a mistake because i have to go back now i call my mom i'm asking her how many acres does she has it's unlikely for students of competing university and going because they have taken that you know when you go to school like it's more like they are pulling something out from you see, you. you see one thing that i would say is the white man will never leave anything good for us so <laughs> our educational system is not built on the cultures exactly. and the systems that exactly. we have in this country exactly so whatever they have to do to suppress us so that they have power over us that's what they do and the, their the target is the schools they start with the younger generation all right the youth so that they inculcate that kind of education they give them that kind of miseducation and at the end of the day they will veer from the kind of thing that will actually make them bigger great. and great in, on the continent and the, the saddest aspect of it is that we are not even aware mm. we are not even aware that's very it's more like you are not even aware that you have been mis miseducated that's the painful aspect of mm. the education that they are giving us you know when maybe you are a graduate you see ah, what's this guy talking about it's more like it's new to you but go back if you want to harness your africanness is within farming so agriculture is one of them our people are very friendly culturally mm. it's those who haven't went outside before you know it's hard for you to reach out to someone but here we are very friendly mm. That's you also, can enter into anyone's house at any time go and sell something to them this doesn't happen in other countries so if you want to sell something if you want to market something if you want to start something mm. you always have the african people the african people we are very sociable you know we don't have we don't really have wars around our house you mm. can just bump into someone house go and eat and all this stuff this is also an advantage and our economy too is business economy mm. and wherever you find you know africa is filled with a lot of uh, problems so people can't find food to eat that problem turn into every problem is an opportunity mm. so these are all some of the advantages so the last time the last thing i'll talk about is the, the, the problems that mm. we have if you are here if you're a graduate and you are complaining that you are not having a job i always say that for job as in the white color job it's it's limited mm. but for an entrepreneurship it's not limited. It's not. It's unlimited. It's unlimited. You, you can, can come you, up. You, you can create a, create something. We have transportation business. You can go there. We have agriculture. I've mentioned that. Mm. We have um, communication. The IT people. Mm. So these are all stuff that you know. We have MTN. What what what's stopping you to create a different version of MTN that will be doing something better than MTN? People will definitely come to you. And, so and, we have and, to open and our with, brain. With this kind of, um, uh, so far, the, the little entrepreneurs that we have in the country, they've seen a problem that is actually, you know, actually facing like the people are facing and they sure. try to also bring solution. And that's how can they are making the money. So I would say like, you know, be becoming an entrepreneur is like you said, identify the problem and then bring solution to exactly. it. Then you can make it. Aha, uh -huh, that kind of. So I want to also add this so the whites most whites are enjoying the african advantage than the black itself ask me why <laughs> why 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 that okay so statement? let's let's take a look at our economy mm. most of all the, the the business here are owned by whites so this is what they do 
is it is it because they have you know the financial support no nope. why in some is, way yes mm. but the tennis we have we have been trained look at the education i've never seen a teacher most of the time they are telling you that go and create a job they mm. are not even telling you so the african advantage you have to also learn your history when you read history five uh, five thousand years ago mm. you realize that other africans were very brilliant the Africans create stuffs, but they didn't implement it in our school. So that's why we, when you go, you don't believe in yourself. You read history. Mm. History is, is the foundation. History will give you the identity. will make you know, you know about that yourself you very well, it. where you come from and how important you are in society. You know that you, you, you have what it takes. You can endure every pain when you start something. Mm. And you can make it big. So let me talk about the white owning our economy so the thing is we are we you know mo, you know most of us like 80 percent of the population have been taught that when you complete go and look for a job mm, that's that's, a, that's most of the time the when a chinese come here have you seen a chinese coming here to apply for a job before no they are coming here for the opportunities they like to yeah, building explore and then make money out of the so they are the building country. business but we have been told that you just come and so i think our education we have to tell people that mm. when you come even if the job is the last thing that you have to get <laughs> mm. you know one one of the book that i read mr vendor we be talk we were going to be talking about yes. it guys you 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 would definitely have to get one for yourself but then he made a profound statement in a, in one of his book that is the african advantage he said that the last time he went to china guangzhou sure. and uh, that uh, you know he met one chinese friend he said that guy's you know came to ghana he spent some time in ghana sure. and so the guy asked me why are they having so many radio you know channels or stations yeah, yeah, in yeah, the country sure, so how sure. about if they have they, they instead of having so much radio and then tv stations in the country you know how about they building businesses and uh, i mean doing something that and will actually bring development to the country and you know the and problem I, with this actually spark like spark you, your yeah that kind of thing and the problem with that is that you know those who control the media are the people that's controlling the mind of the people yeah that, because that's the gateway <laughs> so the reason why china is china is that you can't just go anywhere to just pollute the people mm. just like someone who just set up anyone can just go and set up a media company because they are very deliberate even tiktok they decide what they show so for the chinese people they are showing them invention innovation yeah. the kids they are showing them innovation how to build stuff how to do it but take ghana take africa they have they are, they are so it's like they, they are able to control the algorithm to so uh, uh, show the, the kind of government, content they would uh, you know want to see the chinese government have control over the because they know that if they feed the people with comedy sports religion they are not going to create anything so they have control that okay my people for my people show them innovation entrepreneurship building business and no wonder that china is everywhere and what man think of that's what you become exactly and whatever you see consistently that's what you become sure in this so, way china china own, so i can say that maybe there's a few media in china and it's owned by the government mm, because they want to control the kind of information that comes out and here too i wish that our government or our, you know our leaders on the continent can also do something about it because <laughs> it's it's about time one of the online certification that i'm taking uh, they are the main objective of the course is finish the course build your cv and go and look for job now right now me i am self-aware all right that kind of self-awareness so me I'm learning the course to improve my myself. skill set and also to do something for myself. So assuming like I start my own business, I can use that very practical or the knowledge I've gained from the online course to, I mean, do my stuff, right? To control the system, the structures in, the, in my business to help me grow. That's what exactly. I'm looking forward to see. So if they are telling me, okay, get the this thing, the job, I'm not saying the, getting a job is not is oh, sure, bad, sure. but when you get a job, make sure that you find a problem and solve it and i mean it's it's about time for us all to build that entrepreneurship mindset exactly. and you know one thing that school also does that defeat us much is that when you go to, sometimes eh, when mm. people um are going to school or oh, maybe they are pacing something so that this thing that you are pacing you get a certificate there's there's a new excitement yeah. but if they are pursuing the thing and you said they won't get a certificate they won't do it yeah they won't do it so 
that paper no has deceived a lot of people yeah it's it's, it's like where the, the the authorities and the management should made it uh, like make it aware to students that certificate certificate getting certificate does not mean you've made it in life and so there's other way like they have to think outside the box to build something okay. and that alone will help but my, my 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 stance is that we have to create schools fine mm. if the people go to school they should go without certificate mm. <laughs> maybe maybe it, it may be that we have something that to tell tell someone that you've been to school just go without that. certificate because it could, people it, are hiding it, behind their certificate they think you know i saw some man be he was selling um he was selling bread and ice cream key, like mm. some man be they were doing some and they were saying that the guy is unfortunate to do that I saw it to be very wrong. And <laughs> me, sometimes when I see those things, eh, it's it's very appalling, very bad to s pass that kind of comment. Good. Who's supposed to do that work? Exactly. So it's so more like the, th the thing is one. <laughs> this is my assertion. It could be like, well, the person is doing that kind of hard job, but what is the added value? Like, what can you do to add value to it to improve the nature? I mean, what a person is doing so that it will become more flexible, exactly. more easier to do it. But you. I mean, chastising it to be in a way that it is not fine for the person. The person is way higher than, assuming someone who is a graduate, you know, there was uh, this thing, A1 Bread, that Dumelo, the guy was selling in traffic and Dumelo made a comment on social media that, look at these graduates making, you know, hawking yeah, on the politics. Uh -huh. And the people were all, you know, insulting Dumelo for making that statement. But I see, like, Dumelo also want to be like, want to make it look like, you know the guy is a graduate so why is he selling traffic good, good. but right now he want bread is all over so, so look at the number of people he has employed so that's the kind of advantage that, that we're talking about here so that's why i'm saying that we have been trained that when we are done with school we should go and look for a job and nothing else and let me tell you job will make you wealth mm. if you want to build wealth it's in business it's in business for solve a problem and africa we have a lot of advantage you have you have mentioned some here and i think i have to share some something yeah, yeah, great the with follow you. up we'll be, we'll be sharing <laughs> yeah, this so yeah, if you are done with it yeah. then uh, guys you know something we're going to be sharing something very special here this one is a special let me tell you something don't tell anyone you get me don't go and tell anybody if you get it here keep it inside your pocket your mind but you are not stingy. I know you are going to tell a lot of people. Let's rock it. So today we're going to be a special one from KOD. Sure. Who is KOD? So Kwabina Bindako is an entrepreneur, engineer, and author. So um, before meeting this guy, you know, I was ambitious. When I get out, travel. Yeah, mm. you know, that kind of something. But after meeting him, everything changed. Uh, I started seeing opportunity in Ghana. I started putting, believing in myself. Mm. I started reading a little, a little bit about history. And now... I can say that I'm very confident that I can be very like I'm I'm still on it simple. I can be very successful without moving an inch on the continent. On the continent, amazing. <laughs> we have a couple of books here. So if you can walk us through okay, you know. So we have African Advantage. So, okay, so the African Advantage. So this book tells you what we have as an African. So mm. it's more like this book. Uh, I talk so much about um, how you can be successful as an African. Mm. Uh, if you're an African, you are not cursed. You have what it takes to make If you're an African, you are not cursed. Sure. And let, before you continue <laughs> with the rest of the books, you know, this, you can, walk, you can watch TikTok videos for the whole day. This one will take you, if you are a fast reader, it can take you approximately how many hours. Like, within one hour, you sure. can get it. Sure. Like, sure. you can get the sure. whole this sure. thing. Exactly. You can finish with the reading. Exactly. Okay. Okay, we'll be wrapping up so so hang sure. up and then we'll sure so this is self-investment. So mm. you know, um whatever we are doing here, we have self-investment. Mm, like self-investment. So you bought you bought three of the books. Yeah, four. That's four. Yeah. Good. So that's you have investing, you are investing in, in yourself. yourself. So this tells you that whatever knowledge that you are not taught in school, you shouldn't go for degrees. Mm. You can self invest. Self invest. Self education is the key sure okay. so we also have streamline how to teach yourself money so this yeah, talk this about streamline. financial education financial this education. book is amazing book. you need more money you need to read about financial education and teach yourself some money so i'm yet to you read this make book a lot too. of money so, so this one is financial yeah, intelligence exactly so we yeah. are talking about financial intelligence here we have a book here very simple 
within some few hours you are done with the reading and exactly. not just reading per se but it's going to build your mindset you get me so we okay. also have resi resilience you know when resilience, you are resilience resilience you are you doing, doing the thing and no one is watching you, <laughs> you no one is patronizing your business <laughs> <laughs> you create content no one is watching but still you have the resilience yeah yeah that's a resilient spirit okay Okay. All from Obin Dako. Sure, sure. Beautiful. So these are unlimited opportunity. Unlimited. Unlimited yeah. opportunities. Sure. You get me? This one is way smaller than the even the rest of the books that we've exactly. you know shown you here. But I believe that this one within 40 minutes, yeah, you yeah, should yeah. be able to finish exactly. it's a well concentrated mic and finish within sure, this and sure. make something out of it. Sure. So we also have financial freedom. This one financial freedom. Who doesn't want to get freedom? I mean, I want freedom power pass anybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay so perspective i want to talk a little bit about perspective okay, because perspective. that's what i'm reading currently okay. I, i'm a slow reader so i try to consume it a mm. bit by bit perspective talks about much about how um the author started his life and it's amazing like what? how it's amazing it's amazing what? so i recommend everyone just uh, what yeah, how yes. obenda akon started his life yes everything is I, there. I, I, need his get, I need to get this one perspective yes. sure <laughs> See that man, obey that can care with you. Sure, sure. Eric, we are much grateful, excited to have you on board and uh, for you to share this very informative, uh, sure. you know, uh, what you call it, information with us. And um, we are excited. What's your last words? Then we wrap up. Okay, so thank you for inviting me. I'm telling you that you have what it takes to be successful here in Africa. We have been in a situation where foreigners are owning our lands, our businesses, and we have been thought that we should just go there and be be yes a master mm. we have to start ra raising a generation to love ourselves to love our country we shouldn't be selfish you know the school that we go most of the time it makes us look for our own mm. just just build a house but i have to raise a generation that if i'm succeeding and my friends my my my, my people are suffering that's not enough and that's what obin Daku is doing he he has he has built the wealth already but he saw the need to help Ghanaians, and that's why you have written all these books to help, help us Ghanaians. also it's it's even helping the continent as a whole yeah so i i i tell uh, i'll recommend his book for you and yeah that's why I make sure you get his books sure i trust that you've learned something great here We've talked, we, we talked about African advantage. Look within your environment. Find that advantage. It could be a problem, but weigh it and look at, look at that advantage part and work on it. Opportunities are unlimited. Obey the account here to serve you with the right information. You can reach out to him on any of the platforms and he's Obey the account. On Facebook, on YouTube, it's Obey the account. My name is always The Village Boy and... We are here to shock the rest of the world. Exactly. I know how we do it. Ancha Faka. Ancha Faka. Shaka. <laughs> you dig back.